Now, a cyber policy expert says the community needs to think carefully about limiting the use of facial recognition software. The Commonwealth and states are today expected to agree to strengthen counter-terrorism laws at a special COAG meeting in Canberra. The federal government wants better access to driver's licence photos during investigations. Fergus Hansen from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute joins us now from Canberra. Fergus Hansen, welcome. So what are you concerned about here? Well, this particular change is relatively modest, but I think what we should be talking about as a community is the, the red lines, the limits that we want to put on facial recognition. Facial recognition can be used for all sorts of things, but we're starting to see a whole range of different applications that it could be used for, and I think it's important to have a community discussion about where we want to draw those red lines. So, for example, you can use it for in China for ordering KFC and paying your bill. But you can also use it, a Stanford study showed, to pick out people's gender identities and algorithms are far more effective than humans at being able to predict accurately what people's gender identity is. Do we want to allow that technology to be used, for example, in maternity wards? So I think there's a whole bunch of interesting discussions and quite challenging discussions that we need to be talking about and drawing these lines um, where we think um, community expectations sit. So as far as you're concerned, what applications should it not be used for? Well, it's very difficult to define a line. So I think most Australians would agree that using facial recognition to track down terrorists is a good idea. People might say using it for mur tracking down murderers is a good idea. But what about people who haven't paid their parking fine? Or what about people who attend a protest and they're public servants? What are those? Should those sort of people be arrested or hauled out of crowds? In China, for example, we've seen the government uh, use this technology to pull out people who have been previously convicted for drug offences. They pull them out of crowds, for example, at concerts, conduct um, drug tests on them on the spot and then um, re-arrest them if they're found to be using drugs. So it's very difficult, I think, to draw that red line about what is a serious enough offence and it's a slippery slope to, to incrementally add in more and more offences and we're already talking about identity theft. So I think it's a, quite a slippery slope that we're on. Yeah, and so if, if, as you say, it is a slippery slope, should it be stopped now as far as you're concerned? Well, I think we need to have a pretty serious discussion about where those limits are and it's, it's, I think it's incredibly hard for politicians and for law enforcement to say, well, we've got this technology, we've got this ability, but we're not going to use it for this or that and you end up with a very fine line. So I think it's, it's important to sort of pull things back a little bit and think if we want to live in that kind of environment and how that's going to change our society that we live in if we allow open slather in this area. What about the argument that people who aren't doing anything wrong shouldn't have anything to worry about? Well, I think that's a bit of a furphy in this kind of argument because there's so many different applications for this technology. So, for, as I mentioned, there's a Stanford study out showing that you can use this technology to pick out people's gender identity. Is that a reasonable tool to be using, for example, can spouses that think they're, they might have a closeted partner use the technology on them? Um, should we be just um, identifying people at birth and giving them a gender label? So I think there's there's all these different um, grey zone areas that are very complicated. Um, could you use facial recognition when you're designing algorithms for driverless cars in terms of who they should hit or shouldn't hit? There's a whole bunch of different applications that are very complex and, and raise all kinds of ethical questions. Yeah, and so you're standing up today putting your hand up and saying, hey guys, stop, we need to think about this, but do you feel like this is going to be a tough argument to win here with all those COAG leaders going into that meeting today, and we, we've seen them this morning, seeming to be in really strong agreement? Yeah, I think with all kinds of t national security terrorist um, initiatives, it's very hard for anyone to, s to put their hand up and, and call it out and say that they want to have a, a think about it. And with new technologies, it's almost inevitable that the, the applications will outpace the regulation or the legislation and the ethical discussions. But I think it is worthwhile and it's important for Australians to have discussions. I'm not saying any particular application is, is wrong or right, but I think it's really important to have a, a community discussion to to find out where people's expectations sit and to tease out some of the ways that this technology may change our society. Yeah, well, we'll host more of that community discussion over the coming weeks here now that you've raised those concerns. Fergus Hanson, thanks so much for talking to us this morning on ABC News. Thanks so much for having me.